This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard, hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for us on your podcast provider. Would you like a bed? Uh, yes. They've got shop assistants behind screens in M&S. Signs are up telling people to stay two metres apart. But social distancing isn't too hard when there are fewer people coming into your store. For Marks and Spencer, it's a lot fewer people. In the eight weeks to August, group sales fell just over 19% on last year. Clothing was down by 49.5%. Our editorial column says a shift to home working is hitting the retailer and others in unexpected ways. It comes sadly as little surprise that M&S is axing so many jobs. What is being less reported on is the huge hit that London fashion businesses like M&S will take not just from lockdown, but as workers too scared to return to offices, having been terrified by the government, will not need to spend money on work clothes. Not just office wear, but the little sartorial extras for the socialising that occurs around commuting into a city that offers so much. If bosses keep adding to fears that face-to-face work is not necessary, we are going to keep seeing unemployment rise. Change will come, and we will never return to full office capacity. But this is not a revolution unfolding. It is devastation. The Evening Standard City journalist Mark Shaplin's with me now. Mark, m and is talking about a material shift in trading. That's people that don't need to buy office clothes anymore because they're not going to the office. Is that what's behind this fall in sales? Yeah, it's a big shift and it's something that m and is going to have to deal with in future. And it's one of the reasons why the clothing department has performed so badly. And it's one of the reasons why they're cutting so many jobs. m and traditionally has done very, very well with positions like secretaries and things like that. It's reasonably priced. It's reasonably smart. The problem is, obviously people just aren't going to the office. So they can't sell those types of clothes. Yeah, and M&S has developed over several years, actually, a reputation for not selling the most fashionable of clothes. Now, whether that's true or not is up to public perception, really, isn't it? And that's where they're going to be struggling if they can't sell suits and skirts. Yeah, I mean, they have tried desperately to change their image. They've brought in models like Rosie Huntington, Whiteley and Twiggy and various other big names, Myling Class. But no, essentially, they've never, ever been able to shift that sort of image. In some ways, it's a strength. You could say for the average man, the average woman who's not looking for anything too thrilling, that actually they do a good job. But the reality is they've been called out by coronavirus and they've been called out badly. Is this figure of 7,000 jobs a surprise itself? It seems like a massive number. Did we see that figure coming? I, I think in all honesty, we knew there were going to be job cuts. We didn't know how deep they were going to be. So they had announced previously that they would get rid of 950 head office staff. There are 78,000 workers in m and so 7,000, it, it's brutal, but to say it's a surprise is, is perhaps a step too far. But I, I think m and is a fascinating business. I mean, it's, it's been around for years. People have an emotional link to it. It's, all, it's, it's always a business that I've always thought should have a female chief executive. You sort of have all these alpha males that come in and try and turn it around and never get anywhere. You know, it, it, it's a business that sells the majority of its clothes to women still. It's always struck me that maybe what they need is a, is a female chief exec. Can we expect this, though, from other retailers? Yeah, I think absolutely. I, th- I think we've already seen it. I mean, Debenhams is in real trouble. Department stores like John Lewis have struggled. So rivals to M&S. M&S is not alone. Even high-end stores, Harrods has been hard hit, Selfridges has been hard hit. I mean, shopping as a whole has declined. Um, One, because people aren't going to the office, but also because people aren't going out. So 
men aren't buying t-shirts and jeans, women aren't buying high heels and something to go out in. So it, it, it's a problem for the whole industry, the whole sector, whether you're way down the bottom or right at the top at the high end. So I wonder how the industry can cope with this, because there must be going to be huge changes to the way that these particularly big retailers operate. M&S has been talking about using new technology to reduce layers of management, for example. Are we going to be seeing more of that kind of thing, more of some people working in lots and lots of different departments in stores? Yeah, I think ultimately the, the workers are going to have to skill up. Um, they're going to have to improve their tech skills. They're going to have to be more flexible. I mean, what, what's sort of unique with m and is that it, it has a food business that does very well. So it's food hall, the sales figures, they're down a bit over the last five months since coronavirus but they've actually performed strongly. So the argument has always been with M&S, well, why don't, why, don't you cut the two, why don't you cut the business in two? You have a clothes business and a food business. Or if you're more extreme, you'd say get rid of the clothes business altogether. When you're talking about food, M&S has, of course, got this new deal with Ocado, haven't they? They've taken over from Waitrose. So I'm wondering if there's going to be more emphasis placed on that home delivery of food, which they hadn't really done before. Yeah, I think that's a great deal for them. And M&S hasn't done that well online. It hasn't done as well as it should have over the last 10, 20 years. So the deal with Ocado gets them straight in there. The only problem is, is that Amazon has now come in and said that they're going to start doing free deliveries of groceries. So although they're not in the same market, M&S food is very expensive, very high end. Um, it, it might it might prove tougher than than they they first expected.